So in this video, we'll discuss the conclusion of problem number two from the 2008 AP exam. Uh, we need to do part C and D still, and this is a calculator problem that involves the number of people that are waiting in line to buy tickets to a concert. And in part C here, it says between zero and nine, what's the fewest number of times at which L prime of T has to equal zero? I want to start by thinking about what this means, L prime of T equaling zero. So if L prime of T is equal to zero, we know that says the derivative of L is equal to zero. Uh, but graphically what this would imply is that the slope of the tangent line to the graph of L is equal to zero. I think we have a pretty good idea as to what this means at this point. So what I want to do in part C here is I want to try to do this from a graphical standpoint. And so I'm just going to try to sketch a quick graph of L of T. So I'm going to have L of T on my y-axis, the number of people that are waiting in line at any time T. And T would be measured in hours along the T-axis or the X-axis. And T, I have to show values from 0 to 9, so I'm just going to go by 1s there. So I have values that I need to plot from 0 to 9. And then on the Y-axis, I need to show values from 0 up to just shy of 200. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go by 50s. So 50, 100, 150, and then 200 would be up here somewhere. And we can go ahead and try to plot these values. So we have 0, 120 that has to be on the graph. We have 1, 156, 3, 176, 4, 126, 7, 150, so 4, 5, 6, 7, 150 would put me about right there, 8, 80. So about there, and then 9, comma, 0. So we have to have these points on our graph of L of t. Now what might L of t look like as we think about drawing a curve that travels through all these points? Well, the one thing that we don't really know is we don't know where L of t is going to have to max out or bottom out. But we do know that we're going to have to go through this point. We're going to have to have something that's increasing here. It's going to have to top out somewhere up in here. And then we're going to have to decrease to get through this point. So we're going to have a graph that's going to look something like this. I don't know exactly where it tops out. And I don't know exactly where it bottoms out on this interval. But I do have to change directions to get through that point, And then change directions again to get through these last two points. And I missed that point. So just let me adjust that a little bit. Uh, if you look at this graph, what you see is you see one place here where the graph has a horizontal tangent, one place here where the graph has a horizontal tangent, and a third place here where the graph has a horizontal tangent or where the slope of the tangent line is zero. And so it seems like we have to have at least three places where this must occur, but let's try to make sure we, we discuss this. Now I'm not going to try to write out this reason because obviously it takes me a little bit of time to, to write things when I'm putting a video together this way, but I think what we can say is since our graph, since our function L of t is continuous, we know it's continuous because its derivative exists uh, everywhere, and its second derivative actually also exists everywhere. So since this graph is continuous because of it being twice differentiable, we know that the function has to increase from 120 to get to 176. Now we don't know if it goes a little bit above 176 or not. Uh, we don't really have enough information to determine that. It very well might uh, go up above 176 here and then come back down through that point. So we don't know if it does get above or below that point. But what we can say is that somewhere uh, on this interval, somewhere between 1 and 4, we have to have a local max. We have to max out somewhere and change direction to get back down to this value at uh, the t value of 4. Also, somewhere on the interval from 3 to 7, we have to have somewhere where our graph bottoms out and has a local minimum. right? To, to get down through this point and then back up to this point, your graph has to bottom out somewhere between uh, this t value and this t value, likely really close to where t is equal to 4. But we can't be sure about that. And then again, to get from this y value to this y value, our graph is going to have to top out somewhere on the interval from 4 to 4 to 8, we're going to have to top out. So we're going to have to have another local max there. Now, candidates for local maxes and local mins are two things, stationary points, 
which are places where the slope of the tangent line is equal to zero, and singular points, which are places where the derivative is undefined. Since our function is twice differentiable, we know there aren't any places where our function's undefined. So to have the two local maxes that our graph would need to take on, as well as the one local min that our graph has to take on, we have to have at least three points where L prime of t is equal to zero. In the last part of this, part D, they say the rate that tickets are sold from zero to nine is modeled by this function. That's measured in tickets per hour based on the model, how many tickets were sold by 3 p.m., which is the t value of three. This is round this to the nearest whole number. So what we have is this function r of t. And this function r of t uh, is measured in tickets per hour. So this has units of tickets per hour. Now what we want is we want an answer that represents how many tickets were sold on the interval from zero to three. So we would need to multiply this set of units by something that has units of hours so that we could cancel those and have a result that just has units of tickets. That's what our result's supposed to be measured in. And so we could multiply r of t by t or by dt in order to get the appropriate set of units on our answer. And the reason why I put the dt here is because if we integrate the rate of change at which tickets are sold, we're gonna get how many tickets were actually sold, the change in the number of tickets sold from the time when we want to start this calculation to the time when we want to end it. So we would have to do this integral to figure out how many tickets were sold by 3 p.m. Uh, this is a calculator problem, and so to figure out the result here, what we'll do is we'll use the calculator. So let me see if I can get the calculator up onto the screen, and we'll go ahead and just kind of refresh how this is done. You can do this either from the graph screen or from the home screen. I'll go to the home screen this time. And to do an integral from the home screen, what you're going to do is you're going to go into your math menu. And then way down toward the bottom of this list, option number nine, uh, function integrator. If you pick that option, what you type in to have the calculator carry this calculation out for you is you type in the function that you want to integrate. So we want to integrate this function. So I just need to carefully take a minute to get this put into my calculator properly. So I'm looking at 550 times, I could use a T, I'm just gonna use an X. So 550 times X times, and then I have E to the uh, negative, and then again, I'm putting X in place of T, X over two. I have to close that set of parentheses for the exponent. I don't wanna enclose the initial par parentheses that I got. I don't wanna close that off yet. I now need to give the calculator a comma and tell it which variable to integrate with respect to. Well, I put x's into my calculator here, so I'm gonna tell the calculator to do this integral with respect to x. I now need another comma, and now I need to give the calculator the lower limit of integration, which is zero. I need a third comma, and I need to tell the calculator the upper limit of integration, which is three. Now I'll close that initial parenthesis that I got, and if I hit enter, calculator gets me my answer, so I can say that this integral is approximately 970 2.784 typically on an AP exam problem you'll round or truncate to the third digit beyond the decimal uh, in this case it does say to the nearest whole number so we can go ahead and we can bump this up to 973 tickets